anterior cervical decompression infusion is commonly performed for neck ailments that result in neck pain and or radicular arm pain. That is related most commonly to degenerative disorders such as degenerative disc disease, uh, instability such as spondylolisthesis. We also perform these procedures for more serious conditions that include spinal cord compression and symptoms that we call myelopathy. Meaning in certain conditions, the spinal cord impingement can lead to difficulty with walking and balance, can lead to difficulty in, with function and use of the upper extremities and hands, can also lead to difficulty with bowel and bladder function. The surgical goal is twofold. One is to unpinch or decompress the spinal cord and nerves. The second goal is to stabilize that segment of the spine. We do that by removing the disc in its entirety, and by doing so, by directly removing that disc material, can unpinch or decompress the spinal cord and nerves. Oftentimes, there's also bony projections that we call osteophytes, that most lay people refer to as bone spurs that also require to be carefully removed off of the surface of the spinal cord and nerves. Once that disc material and osteophytes are removed, then that segment of the spine needs to be stabilized. And we do that by inserting a spacer into that disc space. The spacer is hollow. By doing that, we are able to elevate the disc space further decompressing the nerves, and then allow those bones to heal together through and around that hollow spacer. That is essentially the definition of the fusion. This surgery is commonly performed at one or two levels. In that subset of patients, we perform this surgery as an outpatient. The surgery usually takes about one to one and a half hours to complete, after which the patient recovers in the recovery room with that surgery, the patients are essentially discharged to home and allowed to recover within the confines of their own environment. For more extensive procedures, such as three or more levels, then those surgeries are performed as an inpatient as they require more close observation after surgery. After the cervical fusion surgery, I do place patients into a brace afterwards, and that brace is worn anywhere from one to two weeks. Within that initial post-operative period, the main activity restriction is driving. In addition, I do limit them in terms of their lifting to less than 20 pounds. After I see them for their first post-operative visit, which is in that one to two week window, the brace is removed, they're allowed to increase their activity with the exception of heavy lifting or essentially straining, which is a restriction for approximately six weeks. After cervical surgery, there's not a lot of formal physical therapy that is required. Patients are usually able to return to their normal level of function uh, within that two to six week window. For patients that participate in strenuous activities or high risk activities, or have high risk occupations, I typically restrict that for approximately six months. For example, contact sports, occupations would put you at risk for head injuries such as law enforcement or other high risk activities such as water skiing or snowboarding, etc. Overall, the recovery after anterior cervical fusion is pretty straightforward uh, and routine. Um, there is not a lot of intense physical therapy that is required and the anticipated results are very good.